let's look at different ways that we can transport things in plants. Transportation in plants, we're talking about the movement of water, but the movement of water primarily is dealt with in talking about transpiration. So here we're going to be talking specifically about the products of photosynthesis and how they can be moved around, and also how we get some of the important ions actually in to the plant from the soil. So first of all, we start down at the roots. Uh, the roots, you can see they're pretty hairy looking and all these little hairs and extensions and branches are to increase the surface area. And so the water is taken up through a lot of these root hairs, but the minerals are also taken up through here as well too. We're gonna see that in the next slide. So SA, that means surface area. So the root hairs help basically to create large surface area to make absorption a little bit more efficient. So a few ways that uh, mineral ions can actually be moved in. So we're primarily talking about nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and calcium taken up in the form of ions. Uh, one quick way is through diffusion. If there's a higher concentration outside of the root hairs, then it's just a matter of diffusion. Higher concentration in the soil is going to move into the roots. Um, there's a symbiotic relationship that can also happen between fungi and the actual plants themselves and so there's a little bit of a, a trade-off here so minerals can be traded for glucose so some of the glucose that's manufactured during photosynthesis can actually be uh, transferred over to the hyphae these are the actual branches when a fungus grows basically it puts down these little branches kind of like the fungus's own uh, roots you can think of and so those roots can be those roots of the fungus, the hyphae, can actually be branched together with the roots of the actual plant. And so you get this little trade-off going here. So that's one other method. And then a final method we need to understand about is um, how mineral ions are taken up through something called mass flow. So when water gets taken up, a lot of the times there are minerals that are, that are already dissolved in there. And then so that just kind of comes as a bonus with the water that's taken up to the process of transpiration. Mineral ion absorption, obviously if we're moving from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, you've seen this over and over again in various parts of the biology syllabus. Anytime you have to transfer things against their concentration gradient, you need energy in the form of ATP. And so that's no different here. It's called active transport. And so for these root cells to actually take up some of things against their concentration gradient, take up some of these minerals against their concentration gradient, we require there to be ATP. Now, I mentioned before in one of the previous videos when I was a kid, I used to go water plants and uh, I thought it would just save me a lot of time just by throwing tons of water down there into the soil so I wouldn't have to go. I could just do it once every two weeks instead of once a week or something like that. That doesn't do uh, the, the plant any good, actually, because when you actually drown uh, the roots, drown the soil, fill it with water, you're actually preventing those cells uh, down in the soil from actually getting any oxygen. So the soil's not, uh, it's got all these air pockets there. So oxygen regularly does go down there. And then so those plants, cells, are also doing cellular respiration. So in order to do active transport, you need the presence of oxygen because the plants, most people think that plants are only doing photosynthesis, they don't do cellular respiration as well. The fact is that they do both and they need to actually produce ATP. So if you actually put too much water down in the soil, you prevent those root cells from actually picking up any oxygen. If they, if they can't pick up any oxygen, then you can't have cellular respiration happening and no energy is produced. If no energy is produced, you get no active transport, no ATP, and then the mineral uptake stops and you can end up starving a plant. And that's one quick way to kill a plant. Plants do not have bones. They don't have a skeleton. So how do they stay standing like that? And how can when I walk through them, uh, I'm not breaking bones and they're still able to come back up? And the answer is something called turgor. Uh, if you look over here, this, these diagrams over here, um, if a cell has plenty of water, it can stay very turgid. The opposite of the word turgid is flaccid. And that just means there's not enough uh, water pushing up against the vacuole. 
in order to provide that kind of support. So turgor is something that's there, so the vacuole takes up water, the cells will swell, and then you have the cell wall at the outside, which is actually going to prevent this from actually bursting. The difference is, in animal cells, if, there's, if too much water comes in, then it can actually cause the cells to burst. So the cell wall adds this level of uh, structure here. So if you have plants at home and you don't water them for a while, then you see them start to wilt, and that's really sad. You don't want to give somebody some roses and some plants that are not turgid. You want to give turgid roses. Ask for that next time. Also, trees and shrubs have woody stems, and the xylem vessels and tracheids have something called lignin, which is uh, the tissue that really that adds some additional uh, support to the actual plant cells and their structure. There are certain types of vegetables you can eat which are extra ligniny, and you'll know that because you'll have a tough time chewing through them, and you'll probably end up spitting them out. I find this a lot in Thai food. Phloem, not phlegm. Phloem are special tubes that are carrying the products of photosynthesis around the plant to be stored and stuff like that. Xylem you've heard of, X-Y-L-E-M. Xylem carries a lot of water, although there can be some nutrients that are transferred there. But phloem is the primary type of tube that actually passes these things around here. And you can see here, if you do a little experiment where you actually cut out, just trim this stem slightly and remove all the phloem, still allowing the water to pass through, you can see that if I cut off, and this actually happens in two, lo in two directions, which is why this is called translocation. If you actually cut off uh, the phloem, which you're actually transferring the products of photosynthesis, you can see that this fruit, where a lot of that uh, glucose actually goes to, it gets cut off. It gets cut off, and if it gets cut off, then you get this tiny little apple, which is kind of sad. So you're cutting off uh, from both directions, and that's a simple, it's called a ringing experiment that you can try out. So phloem are, are found all throughout the plant. It's for transferring things from the leaves through to the stems, and even to the roots, because there are a lot of specialized roots that actually store some of the products of photosynthesis. And these phloem tubes actually link part of the plant's uh, parts of the plants together from where this stuff is produced to where it's actually needed. Okay, and uh, amino acids are also transported in this way. Energy is required to do this, and it's called active translocation, so ATP is required. And there's two more things you need to understand. One is about like the source and the sink, basically. A source is where the sugars or amino acids are actually loaded in or uh, produced and then the sinks are where they are kind of transported to and stored for example so in green leaves green stems uh, storage tissues and seeds for germinating if you have a, a seed basically when you drop a seed into the soil it, it's not doing photosynthesis yet because it hasn't grown a stem and leaves so it's buried underground where does it have its energy to actually start uh, growing and a lot of that was deposited by the parent plant. So it's actually in the first two leaves called the cotyledons basically uh, Tap roots or tubers are also a source mm -hmm. and where do they actually go to? Well, they can be they can move to places that actually have to use a lot of that energy So for example roots we talked about previously in the roots uh, you need active transport and energy to actually help bring in mineral ions against their concentration gradient. So the glucose goes to there, combines with some of the oxygen, and then does cellular respiration to actually produce energy to allow that to happen. And any part of the plant that's actually um, growing or developing is going to need some of that. So the shoot as it grows higher, or the roots as they dig deeper, or any of the fruits that are being made um, are going to be requiring a lot of that energy in the form of glucose.